And there's not a higher, I don't think, a higher return on just any one single add-on to your business than when you get that first admin of what it does to your income percentage-wise. It's huge. Hi, my name is Brian Eisenhower, and I am here with a couple of uh, friends of mine that are also coaches at, at uh, ICC, um, and that is Travis Reeser and Brad Baldwin. Uh, we've been getting together for our annual business planning and training retreat at ICC, so I grabbed these guys, pulled them aside, and we've been talking about some of the major issues um, that a lot of uh, our clients face. And because at ICC, we do end up coaching a lot of the top uh, real estate teams in the country. Um, they have a lot of problems too, and we love, we love giving them help. So, but we also coach a lot of solo agents and agents that are just starting out uh, building a real estate team too. Um, and so, we talked about one of the major issues that that agents face in this dilemma is okay. I'm, I'm selling a, a decent amount of real estate. Who do I hire first? You know, who do I hire first, and why do I do it? Um, so, what, what are you guys seeing out there? You're, you guys are the ones on the phone all day. You tell yeah. me. You tell me. Well, you know, it, it, it's, it's a great question that you ask, Brian, because it's probably one of the biggest challenges that I, I have as a coach is getting people to make that first hire. Yeah. Um, that they're going to have somebody on the payroll, you know. There's a lot of fear involved around that. And can I make a, can I can I write a check out every month to somebody, you know. Can every I two weeks, them? man. Yeah, every yeah, two yeah. weeks, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, obviously, they need the production to support it. You know, there's certain production points where it supports that kind of in general, you know, for most people, not every time, but around three consistent transactions per month, you know, which there may be some some give and flux there depending on how they are, how, how their business flows throughout the year. Um, but whenever they're to that point where they're kind of maxed out and don't have any more hours in a day, that's time to make that first hire who's a strong administrative person, yeah. you know, somebody that fits the right characteristics. Uh, to be a great support person that's customer friendly and detailed oriented to come in there and back them up. Yeah, I want to add to that too because he said, when, like when do we make that hire? It's when we're getting about three closings per month, but it never works out that well, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. You never get three closings yeah. a month. Like it's, I wish it were that systematic and, and predictable. Yeah. But typically when you're a solo agent, there's a lot up and down. Yeah. And then real estate, typically has seasons. No matter where you live, there's usually a busy season and a slower season. They vary, but for a lot of North America, um, the spring and summer are the busy season and the winter is slow. But you know, there are many areas that, that, that uh, you know, like a Florida, for example, where the, the winter might be a busy season. Okay? Yeah. But regardless, there's still a harvest season when we do most of our business. So, but let's just say in, in, in the majority of places, doing three a month might start off one transaction in January, one in February, sure. two closings yeah. in March, three in April, and then it's eight yeah. in May, eight in yeah. June, nine in July, exactly. and then it starts back and back down in the winter. Mm -hmm. So it is very hard to keep up as a solo agent yeah. that is closing, let's say, 36 transactions a year or three a month during that busy season. So you're going to stop trying to get business during that season and really yeah. starve in the winter. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're going to dip, your production is going to dip really down. So it's panic again until we generate business at the start of the year. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we're going to get too busy to generate. That's when we talk about getting administrators. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point that you make. And you know, if it helps ease the pain of hiring somebody the first time, maybe you just set that expectation up front. I remember years ago when I hired my first, uh, admin, I, I let them know, hey, when we slow down, you may only get 25 hours a week instead of 40 hour position. And you might, you'll probably be surprised when you can lead generate all that, you, that you never have to back them down. But if you, if you want to make sure that you're coming from integrity and afraid you'd have to lay somebody off in three months, let them know, let them know what, that, what your goal is and that you have concerns because the business goes up and down. Maybe you lay that out right up front. Another side note with that too, with hiring somebody and getting over that fear of writing that paycheck, is are you make, giving yourself a paycheck? You know, are you living like a king whenever you have eight closings in a month? Yeah, or is it miserable? Yeah, and then it's miserable and you don't know if you can stay and keep your real estate license when it slows down in the fall. So You don't quit. see your kids, you're losing yeah. your spouse. Yeah. Stop doing that stuff. Start paying yourself a paycheck first and build up those reserves and then it's a lot easier push whenever you, you have somebody else 
on the payroll because that's whenever the exciting part of all of this is the boost comes when you get that first admin. There's not a higher, I don't think, a higher return on just any one single add-on to your business than when you get that first admin of what it does to your income percentage-wise. It's huge. Yeah, Brad, I know that's one thing we talked about earlier too. Talk about like how so many agents want to skip hiring the admin and they want to bring on a buyer's agent first. Right, right. And you know, in some areas, that's the way to go uh, because you don't necessarily need it. There's no one way or wrong way to do this. Like if you're in a real big luxury market, you know, and you're closing eight deals a year. I mean, I don't know if you need an admin. Yeah, you can do your own. Work. You know, maybe you need a showing assistant to leverage some of the some of the uh, buyer especially, leads. Especially because in those luxury areas, oftentimes we're not using lock boxes, and that the, the listing agent must be present yeah, at all times right. to show those luxury homes. So we actually have a showing agent that's going to show all of your listings. Yeah. So yeah. there are different strokes for different folks. I think it's really important you say that too, because um, we're talking to the masses here. With, the, with the, the, Those are very exceptions uh, areas. Right, and yeah. you know, in, in hiring an admin, it's not always for production. I mean, I've seen a lot of agents hire an admin for lifestyle, yeah. you know? They've got the money and they hire an admin to, you know, uh, just live a better life and there's nothing wrong with that either. It's not always for more business. That's a good point. You know, I, I think that, that people will, because we have a lot of agents where they need to be hiring that admin first, they'll actually gravitate to bringing on a, a, an agent, like a buyer's agent or, or a sales agent on their team first because they don't have to pay them every two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like there's something painful about bringing on someone as an employee and cutting them a paycheck every single two weeks. That's scary. Right. Even though it's a lot less money that they're gonna spend over the course of a year than what it would cost to pay, let's say a buyer's agent receiving a 50% commission split. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot more money typically you're gonna pay out to a buyer's agent at the end of sure. the year. But yeah. you don't, it's, it's not as painful because you're only paying the buyer's agent when they close something. So it's not really even coming out of your bank account. Yeah, you know and, what I'm saying? And what I see is that, you know, if you do make that buyer agent, that first hire, what are you retaining that buyer agent with? Because you don't have the admin support, Cute. right? So now you just have this other person on the so team. You're growing a team. You're just growing a team and that person is constantly leaving you. What you know, the need? admin's the rock to the whole thing. Yeah, that's right. Admin support is you know? huge. Um, and, and buyer, you know, buyer agents are pretty going to soon look at you and say, why do I need you? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, why do I need you? You're not, you know, because they could just, if they're doing all their own admin work, you're doing all your own admin work. Pretty soon, I've seen it before where the, the lead agent of the team starts becoming the admin yeah. for all the agents yeah. of the team. And now we yeah. really yeah, do it. No, yeah. Then, yeah. You know, you're the admin and now you're the trainer and wait, well, you, you forgot to get listings. Right. And you right. need the listings, you need that to keep the engine running. So right. now the gas pedal's off and you've got a big mess. Right. So. so that initial pain of bringing somebody on as an operating expense. Yeah. Um, so what a lot of agents will do is they'll jump out and just start adding agents. So that what they're doing is they're just trying to train them, they're trying to give them a ton of leads, and they're just trying to create an atmosphere, but the, but the foundation's not there, the backbone's not there. And I would say that is one of the biggest reasons that a lot of small teams crash or have massive turnover, and a lot of drama too, because one of the key value adds is just missing. And we always talk about at ICC the three things the lead agent of the team can give to its agents are administrative support, yep. leads. We typically want to give the agents more leads than they're bringing to the team, right? So we're always staying ahead of them. And then three, accountability. Yep. Now the agents don't think they need that one that much, but the lead agent does. We all know that if we're tracking them and holding them accountable and meeting with them weekly so that they're doing the activities they need to do to succeed, so they're generating business and bringing it to the team and we're also providing them with leads. It's a healthy blend of consideration going back and forth to create a long lasting successful relationship between the, the team and the agents. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. great point. Well guys, well thank you so much for your time with us today in this, in this horrible environment. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> tough times. Thank you guys for being with us too.